A couple of early examples, one of the most early examples that was widespread was something called Code Red. Code Red actually started spreading around in January of 2001, and it exploited a buffer overflow vulnerability in Microsoft's Internet Information Services, or IIS. All it really did was send a giant long string of N's, capital letter N's, to IIS instances, and then after all of those ends, actually appended a bunch of code, a bunch of nefarious code. Well, that's kind of interesting because you would think that if IIS sees this odd, poorly formed piece of data, it's just going to discard it. But there was a flaw in IIS that allowed that code that came after all of those ends to get put on the machine and actually executed. There was, interestingly enough, a patch out for Code Red about one month before Code Red took off before the exploit itself exploited a vulnerability in IIS that had been patched for about a month. That gets even more interesting talking about SQL Slammer, which was another buffer overflow vulnerability, malicious piece of code. It was a worm, actually, that took advantage of a buffer overflow in SQL Server, not as SQL code, not as actual SQL code manipulating the database, but Microsoft SQL Server was vulnerable to a buffer overflow. In 2003, an attacker crafted up some code that would specifically target SQL servers, send this, this buffer overflow code to them, and what happened was they would actually start spreading. It was, it was a very prolific worm, but it didn't do a lot of direct harm. It didn't actually even write itself to the hard drive. It actually just infected machines and then rebroadcast itself out to other potentially infected machines. The result of that is that the internet got really, really slow. It essentially was a giant distributed denial of service attack against almost an unpredictable number of, of clients and servers and internet service providers at the time. It was small enough that it actually fit within a single UDP packet, and it was a little bit non-discriminatory about where it went. So it spread like wildfire once it got out. It took advantage of a buffer overflow vulnerability that had been patched, no joke, six months before this vulnerability was exploited with SQL Slammer. There had been a patch out for about six months before this code started nailing systems and actually taking them down. So when these buffer overflows are in place, when there's actually buffer overflows out in the wild on executing code, they have the capacity to allow an enormous amount of harm, lots of denial of service opportunities, lots of attack potential there. 